we've got four steps we've got to go through. First one we're going to do is build a better solar panel. Basic concepts. Bare soil doesn't capture solar energy and make cow food. Brown mature plants don't effectively capture solar energy and make cow food. It takes green growing leaves to carry out photosynthesis and give us cow food. It takes grass to grow grass. This right here, that is the basic objective of grazing management to create a solar panel that looks like that on more acres for more days of every year. That's how you create productivity in pasture. If it's grazed down like that, it's not effective. If it's tall like this and turned brown, it's not effective. We want to make green leaves. Most of you have probably gone to grazing meetings where you've seen this depiction of three phases of growth. We have phase one, limited leaf area, low amount of solar energy capture, but the energy and protein content of that feed is very high. Animals, whether we're talking about rabbits or cows, love to eat phase one grass. Tastes great, less filling. It's not very good for the pasture either because the plant at this point has that negative carbohydrate balance because we don't have enough leaf area to flow energy to the bottom of the plant and the root system. The changing over from phase one to phase two is what leaf stage? Three leaves. Basically when we have three leaves per tiller out there, then we'll get the acceleration in growth rate because we're capturing enough solar energy that we can create new leaves faster. And that will continue until it starts to flatten out. Why does it flatten out? Because we're losing leaves off the bottom of the plant faster than we can add them on the top. And we'll also explore this a little bit later on in the sense of maintenance requirement. So that's the basic view of phase one, two, and three. We already did this one in the field where we looked at the leaf growth stage. There are some of you people who weren't out there, so we'll review it real quickly. The number of leaves on a tiller is far more important than the height of the plant in terms of determining is it ready to graze. This is, these are both western wheatgrass. We have this one at 13 inches tall, this one at 7 to 8 inches. The shorter one is actually physiologically in better condition to be grazed than the tall one. One, two, three, four fully emerged leaves, one, two, and a half. Even though this is taller, from the plant's perspective of energy balance, it's not ready to be grazed. This one is. That's why we can't say, oh, put them in the pasture when it's 12 inches tall, because it depends on how fast it's been growing and what the carbohydrate status is. You know, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half leaf stage. I mean, without water, with water. Water makes grass grow. Just because it's rained and the pasture has popped up like that doesn't necessarily mean that it's ready to be grazed. We've got to get it to that positive carbohydrate balance before we start biting it off. Another concept that I want to introduce is one we use a lot more in academics and you know research and stuff, but I think it's a good concept for farmers and ranchers to be thinking about. And that's leaf area index, because this is a way that we can uh, assess the efficiency of our solar panel. And it's simply the ratio of leaf area to ground area. The cool thing about plants, and if you go into a forest, you really see this, is you create layers of leaves. We have you know, the big trees of the forest that have their leaves up high, you know, the oak trees, the hickories, things like that. And then down at a lower level, we've got buckeyes, wild cherries, different things like that. They don't get that big, but they have a layer of leaves there. And then we have, you know, the lower shrubs, the buckbrush, the brambles and things. And right down there at ground, you know, we've got little soft viney kind of plants or little woodland flowers down there. We have layers of leaves. And each additional layer of leaf gives us an increasing opportunity to capture solar energy. So <clears throat> on this picture, you can see 
not bare dirt, but you can see some of the dead litter on the ground. So that says to us there is some sunlight going all the way through here, but we also see leaves covering other leaves. Anybody want to hazard what the leaf area index is? So that's the ratio of leaves to soil. How many square feet of leaves do we have above a square foot of soil right there? That's actually about one. There's enough open space there that uh, not everything's covered. There's enough overlap to get it up to one. Might be a little higher, but that's about approximately where it is. This is phase one. These grass tillers out here probably just have one to two leaves developed on them. They don't have the three to be into phase two. They definitely don't have the four or five leaves that it's going to be to be at optimal grazing. So that's an LAI of about one. How about this right here? It's grown up now. We see lots of leaves laying over top of each other. We see shadow falling on leaves, which tells us that there's sunlight being intercepted before it even gets to this layer of leaves. So what do you suppose the LAI there might be? I got a three. We can be optimistic. That's about a five right there. Five square foot of leaf over one square foot of soil. That might bring you to ask, well, how high can it go? So let's think about how, how, how high can it go. We've got increasing LAI across the bottom here, percent of solar radiation intercepted. There's a whole lot of solar radiation that has nothing to do with photosynthesis. So we're not talking about every aspect of solar radiation. We're talking about of the wavelengths of energy that are potentially available for photosynthesis, what percentage can be captured in a plant canopy and used for photosynthesis. It starts out slow, accelerates, flattens out. That's the basic response. No matter how high the LAI gets, it'll never reach 100%. It'll approach it, but it'll never get there. Now, our scale runs from 0 to 10 here. You can get LAIs above 10. I don't remember what the highest measured LAI I've ever seen is. Probably, I don't know, 16, something like that. Different plant communities have different LAI potentials. We'll start by looking at the extremes. The extremes are the desert where we have very little leaf area. Now, we describe our environment as high desert. It's sagebrush, bunch grass, steppe country. But if you go to the true Sonoran Desert where you have a plant here, one over there, one over there, they talk about LAIs of 0 0.02, 0 0.06. When the desert blooms, it might be 0 0.12. Deserts are never limited in production by their inability to capture solar energy. It's always water. Water is going to be the limitation down here. We go out here to the jungle, might be plenty of water available, and the LAIs get up here to 10 plus because we have that layering effect. Those are the most productive ecosystems that there are, wet jungle country. We're not too interested in either of those in Iowa, are we? Let's think about rangeland. And the, the working definition of rangeland that we use is a predominantly native plant community in an environment receiving less than 25 inches of rain. That's range. We can have native grassland communities receiving more than 25 inches of rain, and those are prairies. But on rangeland, less than 25 inches of precip, predominantly native vegetation, we see them peaking out at three, three and a half LAI. And we also see that that tells us that about the maximum amount of energy potential we will ever capture in rangeland is 50%. It's not going to get really any better than that because water is still the limiting factor down here. Not too much rangeland in Iowa. Let's come to the pasture. The pasture, if you have a nice, healthy, mixed grass legume community with some forbs in it, it's going to get us up in the five and a half to six LAI range. That's as good as it'll get in pasture. That also tells us that something around 80% of the potential energy is the best we can ever expect to do in pasture. That sets us some bounds now.